Ship's approach will be determined in just a few seconds, at minimum. The captain must decide, is the aircraft aligned, is the crew aware of height above ground, and sink rate, are the visual cues clearly defined. 100 to go. and decision height altitude as the pilots review the approach plate. At 500 feet above the ground, the captain will call out 500 feet. The first officer will immediately respond with actual airspeed and sink rate. At 100 feet above minimums, the captain will call out 100 to go. The captain will be flying the approach on instruments. The first officer and flight engineer will aid in cross-checking and alert the captain if deviations exist. The standard A configuration is 3,000 feet long. It consists of center line lighting spaced 100 feet apart, a 1,000 foot bar, sequence flashing strobe lights, red terminating bar, and red wing bar lights. Runway lights include threshold lights, high intensity runway lights spaced 200 feet apart, and on some runways, center line rollout lights, touchdown zone lights. Runway markings include threshold marking, runway direction number, center line markings, and touchdown zone markings. Another visual cue is the runway contrast depicted against its surroundings. Visual cues seen in daylight may be completely lacking at night. 904 in progress to O'Hare International Airport. The crew is just completing the landing preliminary checklist, descending through 18,000 feet. Reading this checklist early will allow them more time to prepare for the problems associated with high density traffic. Check. Gross weight, indicated airspeed bug. Set and cross check. Altimeters. Set and cross check. Go around deeper. Check. Parking brake. Off. Preliminary is complete. O'Hare Approach Control has cleared Flight 904 to descend to 4,500 feet for an expected approach to runway 14 left. The captain and first officer are reviewing the approach plate. Field elevation is 667 feet. Our decision hike will be 867 feet. The approach plate shows that an approach speed of 120 knots will require a 530 foot per minute sink rate. The captain and the first officer have reviewed silently the missed approach procedures. TWA 904, reduce speed to 200 knots. TWA 904, slow to 200. Flaps 14 degrees. Flaps 14. TWA 904, you cleared to Lakewood intersection, descend to 3,500 feet, report reaching. TWA 904, cleared to 
Lakewood maintained 3,500, leaving 4,500. checklist down to one boxed item which will be checked when the landing gear is extended. Completing these procedures early on the approach allows more time and attention to be devoted towards flying the approach. The first officer sets up his flight director to match the captains in headings and modes. If the first officer has not set up his flight director, the captain will remind him to do so at this time. Now the captain has a standby flight director. The flight engineer will help cross-check panels on final and must not hesitate to call any discrepancy to the captain's attention. to decision height is approximately two minutes. Crew coordination is paramount. Approach and landing errors stem from airspeed deviation, excessive sink rate, too low, too flat, poor alignment, and failure to carry out missed approach procedures when no clearly defined runway exists. 
The first officer and the flight engineer are cross-checking for flags, speed control, sink rate. The first officer is set to call out glide slope or localizer if one dot deviation exists. pilot at 100 feet above the minimums should realize he has two choices when reaching decision height. He should be ready to make a missed approach or transition to contact and landing if visual cues permit. transition to visual can be successful only if, one, when minimums are reached and contact established at minimum. The aircraft should be aligned so the continued flight path would place both main gear on the runway without maneuver. And two, the decision height altitude should be minimums as indicated. You have just observed crew coordination procedures that led to a successful approach and landing.